finally, we're just going to look real quickly at uh, research methods to that are used in uh, some of these uh, developmental studies with early infants when they can't talk to you, and so you have to infer what's happening. Okay, and there's this theory of everything movie about uh, Stephen Hawking that uh, kind of emphasizes the challenge of communicating with people who can't otherwise talk in a normal way. Um, anyway, that's a few years back. So a lot of these methods have to do with kind of watching the watcher, watching what the, the infant does uh, as they're perceiving things in the world. So in this one uh, kind of experiment, you have this uh, paddle with a display on it, and you're essentially tracking how far the kid will move their eyes and head um, as you move this paddle back and forth. And so what you can see is they're more willing to kind of track faces than other kinds of control stimuli that are not faces. At, at an early, even newborn stage, um, you have this kind of built-in preference for faces as revealed by these uh, visual tracking studies. And you can see here a variety of different kinds of patterns. So face stimuli are the most interesting. Uh, text is kind of interesting, but yeah, plain uh, visual stimuli attract less kind of fixation time in measuring how much kids are looking at things. Uh, you can also look here uh, at these kind of more elaborate setups with uh, kind of watching the kid here sitting on the parent's lap and watching these two different monitors. And you can see how much they look at one versus another in the preferential looking case, uh, how much they habituate to looking at one display if they are kind of bored with it. Uh, there's a general idea that the kids show a novelty preference. And so, so one example of this kind of uh, test of an early understanding of object permanence is, you know, kind of having an object hit, go behind a barrier. And then if it reemerges when the barrier is moved, you have, you know, not too much surprise. But if it doesn't reemerge when it's uh, when the barrier is removed, you're very surprised. And so you can see that surprise in terms of the amount of time spent looking at this display versus this display and kind of infer that the kid understands that there's a difference between these two displays based on prior experience. So this idea that you actually are developing a kind of predictive understanding of the world.